Bienvenue, Welcome, and welcome to our webinar today where we are going to be talking about digital twins. My name is Joshua France, and I'm joined today from Jakarta, Terry Bolu from Jakarta, as I mentioned, and we'll be discussing digital twins and showing off some amazing uh, software products from their side of how they can better help you access your value of digital twins. So of course, everyone says digital twins these days. Uh, it's in the newspapers, it's in social media. Uh, everyone has a different definition of what they believe a digital twin should be. And so far I say that the geospatial industry uh, is ready and willing to create as many digital twins as people would like, because it's then all scan data, we hope. Uh, but there's a large part of the definition of digital twin that we want to focus on today. And if uh, you allow me to read the definition as Microsoft states, excuse me, you allow me to read the definition as IBM states it, they call a digital twin is a digital representation of an intended or actual real world physical product, system, or process that serves as the effectively indistinguishable digital counterpart of it for practical purposes such as simulation integration, testing, monitoring, and maintenance. That's quite a large bill of opportunity to fill. So at Regal, we feel very strongly that we've been creating digital twins for years with our products, whether it's a 3D laser scanner on a tripod, one on an aircraft, or mounted on a mobile system, as we will be talking about today. And they've been basically done on a project-by-project -project basis. But if you look at the full definition of digital twin, it focuses on the monitoring and the maintenance of that asset, which means you need to have a way to reaccess those particular projects year over year, update them, add value to them, add changes to them. And uh, this is a very hard thing to do if you have a desk drawer full of hard drives that no one knows where they are. So today we're really gonna focus on some of the great ways that you can access that value from those point clouds and take real advantage of the promise of mobile mapping, which is scan once and get multiple jobs from the same data set. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Terry and he will introduce us to Jakarto and Jakartowns. Go ahead. All right, thank you, Joshua. So uh, my name is Terry, and today I'll be uh, presenting you some of the uh, great software we've been creating over here at uh, Jakarto. But uh, before I do so, I wanted to give you a brief introduction of the company itself. So uh, we are a Canadian company that was founded in 2017 with over 40 employees, and we just opened our uh, an office in the U.S. in Florida, actually, and we'll uh, be able to to better serve the uh, U.S. market. So now Canadian and U.S. market. Um, it was a five-year R&D project. Uh, commercialization started in the March 2021. It took us a while to uh, to integrate the various technologies, but also to create the software that I'm going to show you today that uh, hosts all the data and creates all the value to to uh, to to access that digital twin. Uh, we also the third things we we did is we created uh, tools to to do uh, asset inventory uh, to do it by hands, but also to automate a lot of it as well. So. Uh, basically, we help city territories and utilities supercharge their productivity by providing them a uh, tool to so that their digit to access their digital twin and automated asset inventory. So how do we do that? Today I'm going to talk about our uh, web platform, which is called Jakartowns, which is the digital twin. Uh, mostly we say city because most of our cli current clients that are using this technology right now are in the municipal field. Uh, so Jakartown is, uh, is uh, as if you were there. So basically it's an immersive view uh, that allows you to analyze, measure, geocode, and inventorize any object in the point cloud you've acquired and processed. Uh, it's an engineering grade tools in the sense that it allows you uh, that uh, it 
takes advantage of the precision uh, of the point cloud that you have and combined with your GIS and other software uh, that it gives you a direct access to your digital twin and your assets. So as Joshua mentioned earlier, you might have a lot of projects that are sitting in different hard drives everywhere. Uh, Jakarta Towns uh, serves more as an archiving solution where you can upload all your point cloud and imagery information. And from there, you're able to stream that in, uh, in various ways to GIS software. You can export a scene, a street from Jakarta Town. So you can download the point cloud from just a specific portion of the point cloud directly from uh, the Jakarta Town's uh, web viewer. You could export an entire city or, or county on demand. And you could, you you can also, if you have uh, asset information, uh, CAD or GIS files, you can view them uh, in on top or the point cloud in Jakarta Towns, allowing you to view the context or um, uh, validate or correct any uh, information you have on those assets. Uh, we've also uh, created a way to create ortho images from the point clouds themselves, uh, allowing you to use that data, 3D data, in a 2D environment. For example, on the top right, you see here uh, the the reflectance, the intensity of the intensity value of the point cloud, and as you can see on the bottom right, you can see that in uh, GIS software. So you can overlay that, and it becomes uh, an incredibly incredibly uh, accurate and high resolution base map built from your point cloud data. And all this uses uh, industry standard WMTS feed or XYZ tile. There's a little uh, typo in my um, in my um, in my presentation here, but you understand uh, what I mean. Uh, the second thing uh, I wanted to talk to you about is the automated asset inventory. There's uh, using uh, different algorithms. Once your data uh, is uh, in Jakarta Towns, we have set up a number of, uh, of routines that are uh, aimed at uh, easing the uh, extraction of the various assets you are interested uh, in working with in your point cloud data. So the first thing we do is a uh, automated LIDAR data classification. So we do uh, ground and above ground classification. So uh, the roads, the curb, the sidewalks are differentiated as well as what's above ground. So the vegetation, the building, the overhead networks and the car are all segmented, allowing for a better uh, visibility and better way to work with them. So you can just choose the classes that are that you want to work with. Uh, from though, from there, we are able to uh, do uh, different types of asset inventory. One is a roadside inventory, where we uh, are able to. Uh, mine the data of your point cloud and imagery information, extract precise position, dimension, types of the various um, the various road signs. And if you have data uh, on, mul we have multiple scans at multiple, uh, at different dates or different years of the same area, we can also do uh, change detection on this data. Uh, tree inventory, uh, we're very, very good at uh, extracting trees from point clouds and getting uh, some basic uh, metrics from those trees, such as the tree position, the tree height, uh, the diameter at breast height, which is a common, uh, common metric used in, uh, in trees, the crown diameter and the trunk inclination. And we're constantly uh, working to improve uh, the metrics we can create from the trees. Um, 
uh, we can do uh, advanced analysis on those trees like a branch pattern, wood volumes. We're working now on getting CO2 sequestration estimation, biomass, and a lot of other stuff as well uh, to uh, help you better uh, understand the trees in the point clouds as trees are becoming much more and more uh, are becoming more and more of an asset for uh, municipalities. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, quick question yes. for you before yes. we get too far along. So this is, once again, this is all almost automatically done within the point cloud environment once it's uploaded to the software an ai algorithm is that is that what's taking, uh, taking exactly charge here? yeah it's a mix of, of ai algorithm and some uh, spatial analysis uh, that is taking place both in the porn cloud and the imagery right so and is this all automated yes yeah and it's all from pre-trained information from a mobile laser data collection perspective correct correct uh, there's some uh, well, yes exactly Exactly. Okay. And, and the more the more the more precise your or enrich the uh, your point cloud data is, the better uh, the the results are. But uh, since the regal uh, systems are very high end systems, uh, they work very well. Uh, our, our 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 algorithms are working very well. Right. <laughs> right. And it, it is key that you do the filtering or the classification of the data before you can really take advantage of any of the algorithms. Uh, so that's one of the, the things I've learned with the AI ML world is that the LiDAR point cloud, uh, while our eyes quickly pick up a lot of features, the lack of classification information really is the is the is the starting point. You have yes. to start with good classification in order to effectively move forward with any type of AI. Exactly, exactly. And, and, th and this is why I showed that the first step right. is, the, is the first classification we do that serves as the base for the rest of the, of the, of the extractions. Yep. So, what, okay. so what we see here is uh, another one that it, it, this is probably our most uh, automated and fastest algorithm we have so far on asset is the overhead network. So uh, we have three levels. So we're able to extract. The first thing we do is extract the poles, uh, a pole position. We get the height of the pole, the diameter, the inclination of the pole. Then we're able to uh, capture the the, the, um, the 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 cable, the attachment, and the span. So the con connecting all the poles together, uh, getting information on the actual cables and their span, their attachment points. And uh, as I mentioned in my previous uh, one of the previous slide, I showed information we're able to classify trees uh, so we're able to mix the trees and the over and network so we're able to uh, get some really great insight on vegetation encroachment uh, to 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 help uh, over and network operators uh, prepare for um, for storms or like we just had in Montreal a few weeks ago uh, we had a big ice storm that shut down my house for five days because branches were falling everywhere on the on the power lines and and uh, Cutting the cutting the the, the electricity. Right. Uh, another another a new thing we're working on is the pavement assessment. So um, uh, current processes are very expensive. So we've developed a, a a method where we're analyzing the uh, the three D surface of the road using the point clouds so detecting cracks potholes uh, marking and curbs and based on that we're able to we've created a, a metric to count the the number of cracks and potholes and create a pavement condition index like you see here on the bottom of the of my on the bottom right of my slide where each street is classified by the number of cracks and potholes that are uh, that we've been able to uh, isolate in the point cloud so that's basically using uh, the 3d information of the point cloud of the surface of the road to uh, derive this wow. information. 
so that's the, the 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 PowerPoint portion of the demonstration. If you want, I can now uh, jump to a live demonstration of the Jakarta Towns interface, so you can see uh, what tools are available and how you can play uh, and get value from your point clouds once it's in Jakarta Towns. Yeah, I think that would be great to see. And I think a, a quick question for you while you're switching yes. over is yep. how how is it how is it the data hosting done? Perhaps you can enlighten our users on that process. Is there yeah. something on their server, or it has to be no. sent Every, to your everything? Server? Everything sits on your on our servers. So uh, okay. what we need uh, from you is your um, your uh, processed last file, geo last file, as well right. as your uh, corresponding imagery and metadata on the imagery. So we're able to tie all those together. So all those are uploaded to uh, our uh, cloud repository where all the uh, information is stored. Do you see a Google, Google search bar? I do. It looks like we're back on live here. All right, great. So what I'll do is I'll go to the Jakarta Towns application, which is maps.jakarto.com URL. Perfect. So I'm already identified. The way it works is uh, your, it create, it's uh, done by user password to get access to the, uh, your, your data. Here okay. I, have, I have the data. Here's the Jakarta Town interface. So I'll just uh, quickly show you the, the, how the screen real estate works. So you have good. here the, the search, uh, search bar address and uh, additional menu uh, bar. You have the bottom bar, which gives you information on uh, Jakarta Town's configuration uh, settings, uh, the different coordinate system, as well as the uh, date and time of the of the data of the passage you're looking at. You sure. have a key map on the bottom left showing you where you are, and this key map shows basically all the bubbles, all the imagery bubbles you've uploaded, and the corresponding point clouds. So basically, okay. serve so you can. Uh, and and the main before I go back here, I'll show the main window is the main window basically where you can see uh, your information, both imagery and uh, point cloud information. So okay. going back to the key map basically shows you how you can you can me even make it bigger. So make the key map big and the main window smaller. So basically shows you all your coverage. Here is an example where we put all the data that's currently in uh, in our Jakarta towns. As a super user, I have access to all the, the data. What you have here is over about 80,000 miles of, uh, of roads uh, for the corresponding wow. points clouds you have. So as you can see here, we're in Montreal. So most of it is based around, around Montreal, but we've covered the Toronto area. We've covered the Maritimes as well. And we have some data, uh, a little bit of data in the US that we're starting to collect right now that, I'll, that will be in here. But basically this allows me to jump anywhere I want looking at those blue uh, dots, I can and I can jump anywhere. I'll just make that minimize. All right. Uh, now I can jump every anywhere. So I can, uh, as you would do in other uh, popular uh, mapping application, you can jump to anywhere you want by just clicking on the map, on the key map. And then once you're there, you can view the information. You can drop here on the top left if there's multiple passages here you see i we oh, see, yeah. there's we, two. we're we're two so we were so we uh, mo mo mostly all almost at the same time because probably we went we went one way and then we came back the other way so sure. we can jump from one to the other and uh, and so so that's basically the information you can see on the on the on the imagery but the magic and what you're really i'm pretty sure interested in seeing is how we can turn on the point cloud so all the tools are at the bottom right here oh, yeah uh, so there's a little there's a little cloud there that enables you to switch from uh, from imagery to uh, the point cloud. So now 
you are in the point cloud imagery. So you're able to jump from one bubble to the other. But you're also, we've also created what I really love is here, if I drop down the toolbars, the toolbar changes if you're in imagery mode or point cloud mode. And there's one, one that I like is the free flight, where basically you can you can move around and really navigate through all the data you were you send us or upload it to the Jackart town basically becomes instantly available and you can jump through uh, terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of information. You can really fly through uh, your point cloud information, your point cloud. Here. Yeah, and it's loading pretty fast even on this web demonstration where we're also taking up a lot of bandwidth broadcasting this all to you live. Yes, right. yes. So it's uh, quite seamless. It's a of course, there's some uh, lag to be expected from time to time. No one has uh, infinitely fast Wi-Fi or internet, I don't think yet. But uh, exactly, exactly. Yes, and as you mentioned, jo Joshua, uh, it's better when you do it alone because the streaming <laughs> itself takes some bandwidth and some uh, exactly, yeah. some uh, graphical uh, graphical resources. So yeah, so but very can... seamless uh, from my standpoint here, watching it live. Right. Uh, and so even though we're broadcasting it, I don't think it's uh, poor quality at all. And of course, uh, I can see you can also change the uh, how far in advance it sort of displays down the road as well. So you can shorten that to make it uh, load faster, perhaps. Exactly. And also help you uh, help you uh, do some measurement. For example, if I want to go here, let's see here. Let me go back down. Let me turn here. So I can view the point cloud. Here I see the, the the tree. If I wanted to to have information on the curb or the tree that's behind, uh, there, there there's some uh, there's some occlusion, yeah. but 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 still you can work with that and you can you can you can basically adjust what you're seeing both in in near as well as far. So you can so you can oh, yeah. really, so so that helps in in uh, and just keeping what you want to work for and not get uh, cluttered by uh, other uh, other other uh, other elements or entities you want to see. Oh, that's really slick. I like that. Um, okay. There's also a vert. You can do you can do it in in uh, horizontal, but you can do a vertical filter as well. Oh, nice. Uh, you can you can also filter by intensity, so only showing the points that are that have a high intensity or lower intensity. Right, right, right. So that's pretty interesting. You can change the 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 overall intensity, so you can leave it at uh, at the at the normal, but you can also increase it or decrease it, as well as the point side. You can have your your the points yeah, get bigger or slower. There's a little uh, colorized by elevation as well to uh, help. With this, you can see uh, elevation floor and the free, uh, free flight I uh, showed as well. But we're also, if you have some aerial LIDAR as well, we're able to incorporate that uh, in there. For, so for example, uh, I have data in Montreal, they had a, they, they released open source um, data on the uh, 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 aerial LIDAR campaign they made. A while back, and mm -hmm. so if I go here near our uh, stadium, so that's only the Jakarto data you can see here, but yeah. there's a big stadium right there. So if I combine that information, I can see all available data. So now I'm able to to see uh, the the aerial data that of course oh, nice. isn't isn't the, the the same resolution as the as the ground mobile uh, point cloud but it's still interesting to see um to get yeah. uh, to get a, some idea of of uh of where you the are the area so. beyond the road yeah yeah exactly exactly it's a very nice stadium very cool design um so that's it for the, for this I'll turn back off the going back to the Jakarta data I'll get back on the floor on the ground here so that I can show you uh, 
let me just, I'll just, I'll just go back to the, the floor here, trying to look at some data to, or maybe I'll go back in a better, more residential part. So as you can see, I'm jumping from one city to the other, flying from uh, thousands of miles. So now I'm back in, in the thing here. So I'll put my display distance right here. Okay, good. So uh, now you can see the point cloud. Now I'll turn on the, the asset inventory. Um, uh, tools. So now you have your point clouds, and then you can do a lot, a uh, number of things. The first thing you can do is still using the the tools that are on the bottom right. There's a uh, retrieve the coordinates of a 3D point. So if I wanted to take the base of that pole over here, I just click on it, and it gives me the X Y Z coordinate in this local uh, coordinate system that I have here. Not 23 MTM zone eight. I can even change a uh, reference system to have my coordinates in, in a different coordinate system. So as I'm entering precise, uh, getting information on points that I'm clicking on, I'm basically creating an inventory. So as I, as if I'm clicking on the other pole, if I'm clicking on that other pole at the end here, those are all uh, entering so you can enter information additional information so all of these is is uh, being recorded and those at the end you can export that to a 3d shape file so okay. so you can basically do some uh, surveys in the point cloud directly uh, from your desk uh, having the data in jacquard towns uh, I can get the precise location, <clears throat> but I can also get some measurements. So if I want to get the uh, the distance here between one side of the between one curve to the other, I can I can get that information here. As you can see, distance 3D, distance XY, distance Z. I also have controls that allows me to lock the the z so that z doesn't the, that that elevation doesn't change as i'm measuring so that helps a lot and i can do the same uh, vertically as well so now instead of of going like this so now i'm i'm locking my verticality to create my uh, measurement like this uh, yeah. and as i'm looking to the measurement i see i see here i can get information on the actual distance that are here in my uh, inventory uh, panel. So this is uh, how we would do it. There's also a batch mode. So if you want to do a lot of points, but you, you can take those points. Uh, let's do an annotation here. So if I want to, if I go in batch mode, so then I can have the same name, uh, Terry. And so blah, blah 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 blah. So every time I click, I click those. Mm -hmm. it, they're all they, they all have the same the the same value. So you're able to uh, create those as well. Sure. So and, and you can also do lines as well. So you if you want to do uh you want to in you want to create the line of the curve. You want to follow the curve like this. You're creating a line. Yeah. And that line is stored, and you can uh, export that uh, 3D uh, data as well. So, and just uh, here we had a number of here we had passages in three different years. See, I got data in 2020, in 2020, 2021, 2022. So here we're looking at the 2022 information, but I can switch to the 2021. So there's a different car part. <laughs> I was gonna say, at first, it looked like the car was still there. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a there's another one. Tra must have been trash day. I see the trash cans came out. The second one. Yeah. <laughs> so so it basically shows you. Uh, so 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 that's basically uh, in a nutshell. Uh, what you can do uh, in uh, in Jakarta. Oh, uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention is you can download directly. So if you're there, you can go download and download yeah. the tree scene as you see on screen. So basically, if you click the download button, it will it will uh, it will 
uh, download that infor that point cloud information. Right now, it's downloading it as a PLY in as a PLY format, uh, but uh, those format is pretty uh, that format is pretty used uh, in the in the industry. Sure. Yeah. So I see you can also write comments and leave notes for other people to access the data as well. Exactly. Maybe, yes. Maybe yes. ask for a measurement instead of doing it yourself if that's not your skill set. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah. definitely. definitely. And then with your access levels that you share, are you able to also reduce what what folks can do within the point cloud? Uh, right now, not. But uh, okay. it's something it's something we're working on to create different uh, user experience. Uh, sure. in Jakarta towns. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. You're, you're right on. It's exactly something we're, we're yeah, working yeah. on right now. Because not everyone necessarily has the eye to be able to extract a curve line uh, at Correct. the right accuracy level to then put it in a design file and start designing off of it. Because mm -hmm. uh, that could create some chaos within the ecosystem. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's very, very good point. Very good point. Uh, so what kind of... Uh, change detection stuff can you show in this type of view here between all these these three different data sets is there a way to show differences or, or uh, that right, really relies right, not, on the extract not in the jakartown's interface per se okay. right now uh it's something we're doing uh in the at, on, on the back end on the back okay. end that, that is not uh, currently available but we but we're we're working on something to have uh okay. what i want to show is going back to the key uh the key map is the 2d data i was talking about oh so, yeah that looked really cool on the uh, the graphics so it'd be good to yeah. see that live so if we go here basically what we're doing oh so and and you see all the the measurements that i made on the 3d space yeah. They're all available in here on the 2D space as well. So you have yeah, a, so you have a live live connection between the 2D and the 3D. Mm -hmm. But if I want to go back on the 2D as well, so you're able to change the the different background maps. So here we have oh, the streets, we have a satellite view. Um, but going back to streets, I can you can display toggle or on toggle the display of your breadcrumbs or your basically your the different sure. bubbles uh, image bubble location but the 2d layer is the interesting one since we add those we know we scan those streets in 2020 21 2022 i can turn on the uh layer here so wow this is generated on the fly from the 3d data turn convert it to a raster and stream back to uh, the application it's streamed back in the jacquard towns application but as i mentioned earlier it can be streamed back directly in uh, in uh, esri qgis or any uh, gis or software that supports uh, wmts uh, feeds so as i'm zooming in it's re resampling it and it's giving me high is giving me higher resolution every time, so you can see the cracks uh, yeah. in the streets. And that's just well. from the LiDAR data, wow. That's just the LiDAR data as well. So that's interesting to see. You can see the the, the tree crowns in the LiDAR really? data. And really in, interesting. In the GIS, we have different, we have about six flavors of those rasters. This one mm -hmm. shows all the points, but we have ones that shows only the, the lowest points or the highest points. So by using the lowest points, you would erase the trees to focus more on the on the on the ground itself. Uh, we're also working on some others as well. For uh, there, this one is the intensity of the of the return of the laser, but we can also show one that we've created called verticality, which emphasizes the changes in verticality which i found are really useful if you wanted to for example uh, trace a curb or uh, or any any feature that show a, a change in verticality yeah i mean it's and it's a really unique representation of the data too that just yes. uh it really pops the curb lines out and of course the uh the cracking and the uh 
the, yeah, the individual the slabs of the yeah, the yeah you can see where well. the ceiling as uh, where things have been sealed and where things are you know there's a sort of a deficit there exactly and we've also uh we're working on showing the classification this so the initial classification i showed in the powerpoint uh will mm -hmm. will be available soon in there as well as the uh, shaded rely for uh mm -hmm. if if you're more interested in in looking at variation of the of the surface so those and are this is all this is not already previously stored it's generating on the fly as you step through the point cloud right now exactly oh, wow. exactly. exactly so if i want to yeah so basically that's uh, uh that's so you're not increasing your storage costs by creating all these sub images you're doing it on the fly and using the compute power of the native hosting server exactly yeah those are cloud oh. functions so they're they they're able to scale very well but they also we we've created the display threshold because uh it would take too much power so uh basically when yeah. you're zoomed in uh, you're able although the display threshold is a little higher for the intensity sure because uh, there's less calculation to be done it's just basically flattening the point cloud uh, yeah. intensity channel where the other is uh, is more computation based on looking at the variation in mm -hmm. elevation for the verticality uh, no really unique uh yeah. really unique feature i really like it um thanks so that's uh basically an introduction to uh to to jacquard town so uh you if you it serves as a i think a great way to store uh all your project data in one place share that data with multiple users and to have uh more and more people accessing that data and creating value uh out of it Exactly. Uh, that's the whole name of the game now is that yeah. you have all these great assets that you've spent hours collecting, hours extracting data from. If you own your data, which most folks do, they own their the raw point clouds. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to A, show what you can do with the data uh, for those who have somehow not yet seen a 3D point cloud, which I know sounds insane that those people might still exist out there, but I assure <laughs> you they do. <laughs> um, so just seeing this sometimes is, you know, an amazing uh, reality check for them. That's the, all the great information that can be achieved from here. So having this type of availability for your clients as an advertising of what you can truly accomplish with a mobile LiDAR system, I think uh, just adds extra value uh, to what you can offer at the end of the day. And it helps everyone understand very clearly what types of things can be extracted and which things are you know more science fiction than science reality. Uh, but truly, I think in the world of digital twins, we're at a very clear science reality here uh, in the world. We're not maybe yet you know seeing 3D, uh, looking at a flat table that had no 3D displays and touching our side of our head and turning on our 3D vision. Yet we're not there yet, but uh, to be able to access it through it pretty much anywhere through a web interface is uh, quite powerful tool and then with the automatic feature extraction capabilities that are slowly coming to Jakarta towns if i understand you correctly that's just a workforce multiplier because at the end of the day uh, if you have this size of data set uh, i don't care how many people you hire it will take you a long time to extract all of the features from the from montreal and then from quebec it will take even more and so by the time you finish collecting last year's or this year's data, you still will probably be extracting from the previous year's data. So you will be in a no-win scenario where you'll never catch up. And that's not the point. We want everyone to be able to be caught up live with the data and adding uh, AI ML uh, to your workflow is a necessity in today's day and age because there's you're not going to hire a warehouse full of workers no matter uh, Unless you're Amazon, of course.
Correct, <laughs> correct, correct, and 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 also it uh, it democratizes the use because we have we have cities uh, that are using Jakarta towns where you have even the even the mayor is accessing the 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 data when a customer when a customer when a citizen calls for a complaint he can jump in right away and see 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 what's happening and they say oh my 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 tree I want to cut my tree it's it's not uh, it's 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 sick and then he can just go into Jakarta. Town, he says, "Oh yeah, I see the, I see, I, I see your fur. Is it the fur that's uh, two meters right of your, of your, of your house? Yes, yes, that's the one. Well, it looks in great shape. <laughs> Why do you say and, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sick and so forth? So that's just an example of. Uh, yeah, yeah, and giving more people more access to the data is how uh, we expand the uses and the acceptance of lidar beyond the geospatial world." Because uh, when everyone is doing daily interactions with it, it creates more value, and it it it, it then is needed for more things. Yep. Uh, and when it's needed for more things, you can get more uh, jobs for it, firstly, and therefore get more money for it. So it becomes a perpetual self-funding uh, enterprise, even more so than it already is, because we know. DOTs that are in folks in the transportation industry, they know the value of having a point cloud of their work site. They know they can find amazing things like that they can get a different size crane or that they can't use the bigger size crane because there's power lines that are going to uh, interfere with its use. And just little things like that, they know that. Uh, but then this can go down to the more micro scale to the everyday citizen trying to, you know, identify a an issue with their sidewalk or get a pothole filled so they stop uh, spilling their coffee every morning as they drive to work. Um, some local leaders may not be so enthused about that in the end, but it gives real information that's actionable today. And that's the whole point of the digital twin is getting actionable information to as many people as possible. Correct. Yeah. So um, I think we had uh, contact details already out earlier, but uh, to Get more information about how your firm can start using Jakarta today. Uh, they do work well with our data exports already, as we mentioned briefly. Uh, so this is something, there's not a special template that you need to use to access this. Uh, they work with many of the ones we already have available. Uh, and LAS files are LAS files, no matter who exports them these days. Uh, of course, the Regal ones are, are better, but you know that's besides the point. Um, the, so the, the easiest way to go is visit their website, of course, at jakarto.com uh, and click to sign up for information and one of their helpful team members will be with you to, to discuss how they can help your business access the value of your digital twin. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Terry, for taking the time to uh, show the Regal community and those who are also joining us and maybe are not part of the Regal or Jakarto communities and hopefully will be calling us very shortly after this to join them. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Joshua. All right, well, everyone have a great uh, rest of your week.